Hi, I'm Matt from the Freem Ghostbusters, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my proton pack out of foam and cardboard, and why you should do one as well. Well, this is going to be a quick video, but it's probably in reality not going to be quick. Um, I wanted to do a follow-up video on um, after I did my Spengler wand um, kind of. Uh, modding kind of, I didn't actually mod it yet, um, but I talked about the potential mods I wanted to do to my Spengler wand. Um, and somebody in the comments, whose name I can't remember, I'll stick it down here, um, said, can I show off my foam pack? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But first, before I do that, I want to talk about how I became a Ghostbuster, um, how I made my pack through the journey, um, and uh, why I think you should make one as well. And you can make it out of anything. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't make a proton pack. Um, so I'm not filming in my kitchen today, I'm filming in the conservatory, uh, which is uh, normally very bright and airy and wonderful place to do some filming. Um, but my uh, daughter took a long time to go to sleep tonight, so I'm now in the room that is furthest away, and it's night time. And the problem with filming at night from a conservatory that has solar film is that it looks like mirrors everywhere. Uh, so apologies if you can see mess behind me in the reflection. Um, that's just life. Let's just go back to 2017, way before the birth of my daughter, back when I had plenty of free time to frolic in the garden and binge watch Netflix. My wife and I were discussing what to do for Halloween that year. We also wanted to uh, do something that we could use for a window display event called Window Wonderland. Now, um, for people that aren't aware of what Window Wonderland is, it's a UK-based scheme where um, everybody in a town is encouraged to um, do a window display. Um, it can be anything you like, um, and it's not a competition, it's just for fun. But people can go around the town and they can look through all the windows. Um, and so we wanted to kind of combine Halloween and the Window Wonderland. Now, I'd always been into uh, Ghostbusters, particularly the real Ghostbusters when I was a kid. I grew up um, in the 90s. I was born in 1984, which is a bit too young to watch Ghostbusters in the cinema, but I was really into Ghostbusters cartoons as a kid, and then through the early 90s watching um, the movies as well. And uh, somewhere in the mid-90s, I want to say 94, um, but I'm not entirely sure, um, I went to America with my family and I actually got to meet, in uh, air quotes, um, a real Ghostbuster um, as well. So my wife and I thought we would have a crack at doing a Ghostbuster costume ourselves. Um, we weren't really aware of how easy or difficult that would be and we weren't too, we, we had a bu we, you know, very low budget really. We, we weren't um, serious about a Ghostbusters cosplay back then. Um, although I did want to get the proper flight suit so I did get um, a couple of proper flight suits. The um, Nomex, oh I'm, it's, it's like C WP27PU, I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, so we managed to get a couple of them um, and um, some patches um, for the arms and, and, and name badges as well. Um, and that was really cool. Um, but really what we needed, it was a window display competition as well as for Halloween, so we needed props. So I built a uh, ghost containment unit um, out of a cardboard box and I'll, I'll put some pictures up of that now. Um, I made a ghost trap out of just a shoebox with the yellow and black hazard tape on it. And here's the animation that I made. This is um, kind of like a virtual painting. It's uh, Vigo the Carpathian and uh, he winks and he smirks. I wonder if you'll see there with the camera. There you go, just a little wink. Um, and then lightning comes out of his eyes and um, then the Ghostbusters kind of shoot him with the... Um... There you go, there's his lightning. Um, then he gets uh, sort of vanquished by the Ghostbusters and then it um, turns into that picture at the end of Ghostbusters 2 when um, uh, all, all the four of the Ghostbusters are um, kind of looking angelic and... Um, uh, what's the word? Well, they're heroes. So that they're kind of they're the heroes. There you go. I might as well play the whole thing while, it, while we've got it. Um, so what I did is I kind of put a wooden frame around an old television um, and painted that gold and then I stuck it on um, a stand and stuck that in the window and then um, that kind of gave the appearance of kind of virtual, virtual painting. I also printed off 
all the newspaper clippings and cards and stuck them in the window. Um, did that for both Halloween and the um, Window Wonderland competition. Um, but what a Ghostbuster really needs, you can't be a Ghostbuster without some ghostbusting equipment and I know that's what this video is supposed to be about so um, I want to I want to talk through what I did. So I downloaded Stefan's plans from gbfans.com and printed them out. Um, I tried to be as close to these plans as possible but you know I had to take some creative liberties with both the limitations of materials I had and my uh, kind of mm, crafting capabilities. Um, you'll see from a few of these photos that I took of my construction process how it began uh, there were bits that I kind of started to use, uh, like kind of um, a drinks bottle, um, and then I kind of abandoned that idea. In the end, I used a cardboard tube. It took me about a few days to cut out, stick everything together, paint all the sections, um, and then another day or two to kind of program the Arduino that controls the lighting. Um, I think my code is still up on Tinkercad. If it is, I'll stick a link to that in the description. While I made my Proton Pack on time, I sadly ran out of time for the new trainer one. So what I did is I took a kind of Halloween lightsaber toy, ripped out the um, kind of ghostly parts that were sticking out, cut the end of the tube off and um, kind of just stuck it on the end of um, the tube and stuck it to the proton pack. And I, and I think it looked all right. It, it looked okay. Um, it was acceptable for Halloween, um, but it wasn't screen accurate at all in the slightest. But what you really want to see is my proton pack. So I'm just going to go and grab it. And here it is. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take you on a little tour of it in just a moment, but it is a full size one-to-one -one, um, scale proton pack. It's made mostly of foam and foam core. Um, this is a pencil. Uh, these are also pencils here. I think in the real thing, these were pencils as well. I think they just painted them. On, um, on, on the screen screen use proton packs. Um, we have some lights flashing here on, on the, um, the oh, I've forgotten what it's called, power cell, that's the word. Um, and we have um, the uh, lights rotating on the cyclotron. Um, it's junk. But I think it looks all right. Um, what, else, what else can we talk about? Uh, so this is toilet roll. Um, this is some drinks carton uh, lids. This is made of foam core. Um, this is uh, this is the top of a spray can, you know, like spray paint. This was the cardboard tube that originally I was going to use a drinks bottle for, but abandoned that because it looked crap. Uh, the clip hard. Uh, this is a uh, medicine bottle with I can't remember what the other lid was that was a lid off something else. Um, these are toilet rolls filled with squirty foam. Uh, and this this is a Pringles can. Uh, I th think that's mostly it. It's got some cast parts on. So you can see here um, the resistor here. Uh, there's another one um, on the other side that I probably can't, can't turn. Um, Oh, let's get it in shot. Um, the kind of elbows and everything were just some kind of like plastic things that I either painted brass coloured or um, grey for. Um, and the ribbon cable is just a, it's just a cheap ribbon cable. I think it had 60, 60 cables within it. Um, just kind of rainbow colours. Um, it is on the back of a real Alice frame um, because it's bloody awkward to wear without an Alice frame, I'll tell you that. Um, I think a lot of the people put Alice frames on the spirit packs as well because it makes it a lot easier to, to wear. Um, sorry, sorry you can't really see it that greatly. Um, I'll, uh, if you follow me on Twitter you can probably see some pictures. Anyway, I'm just going to put this down because it's bloody heavy. Now after we've done the Window Wonderland and uh, Halloween, I, I really, really enjoyed um, becoming the Ghostbuster, I suppose. And I'd, I'd never really been into the scene before. But I was never happy uh, with my um, Neutrona wand. I call it a Neutrona wand. You know, it was a kid's toy made out of um, a lightsaber. 
Um, and um, I wore it to a couple of conventions in sort of um, early 2018, but I was never, never really happy with it. So I did um, purchase a uh, kit from Nicotron, who um, he doesn't make kits anymore. Um, but this was mostly resin cast uh, with a few um, kind of found materials. Um, it's, uh, it's a reasonably accurate um, Neutrona wand in some respects. We have a cast uh, clip art um, there. Um, and uh, we've got um, cast, uh, what they call them, bellows uh, there. Um, and it's got real, real switches um, in, you know, here and so on. Um, but I couldn't really justify the cost of um, full accuracy because I'm still kind of behind, you know, the kind of elitist kind of thing. I was never really into that. So um, I took my own take on it and I, and I wanted to use the um, innards out of my um, toy that I had been using and then I stuffed them in here. Uh, so um, I found some uh, kind of bar graph LEDs um, and rigged them up to a simple circuit which turns them on or off. So they all come on at once. Um, that's, it doesn't really do anything special. This is just decorative, this switch. Um, so that was quite cool. Um, but the inside of this contains, well, it's okay, let me just explain the lightsaber toy. So the lightsaber toy was, um, you, you imagine a lightsaber, so they had one set of lights that pointed straight up uh, down the full length of the tube. And then there was kind of like, um, like a ghost toy at the end and the other lights pointed downwards. So when you turned it on, both the ghost flashed and this lightsaber toy flashed anyway. Um, but what that gave me with uh, gave me was two sets of um, LEDs in a, a nice kind of circular disc. So I put one set at the end of this barrel, pointing that way. I put the other set kind of inside here, pointing up. I um, wired in an additional two LEDs here and here. Um, I can't, in fact, I don't even know if they are LEDs. They might even just be the, I think I might even have just put the plastic bit so that light shines through. I'll find out in a minute when I haven't turned it on for a while. Um, so to switch on my uh, Mark I Neutrona wand, we switch on, that gives us power. And then this momentary switch cycles through the three separate uh, lighting, which is flash really, really, really fast, um, kind of medium and then slow. So that's it. So there's no sounds, um, but it does flash extremely brightly. It's far brighter than the um, Mattel and the uh, Spengler wand. You can look right down the Spengler wand and it's fine because it's diffused, but this is bright. Um, that's all it does, it just flashes. Um, and judging by this, I think, yeah, that is a red and a green LED. So I did, I did actually wire in proper LEDs. I think they should be orange in the real ones. I can't remember. Um, anyway, so that was that was my uh, Mark I Neutrona wand. Um, I really enjoyed wearing this out, but this is heavy. This is a heavy kit. Um, it was heavy anyway before I put electronics in. I'm just going to switch this off because it's going to blind me. There we go. Off, off. Um, it's heavy. It's far too heavy to fit on a proton pack. I can't, I can't, I ain't got enough hands to grab it as well. But this is, this is far too heavy. This would just, would just break the foam off because it's just foam. It was never built to last. The, the fact that it's lasted as long as it did is incredible really. Um, but it's far too heavy. So I ended up uh, putting an S hook on, on the back um, and hang that off a belt. But after I've been wearing this all day, I will have a bruise. It is not comfortable. It's heavy. Now I dressed in this full gear a few times during 2018 and 19 and then a few months after the birth of my daughter last August we all dressed up as a family for a carnival event in Wales and if you think I'm looking a bit grumpy and dishevelled in these photos it's because I was absolutely roasting and my waist was killing me from a heavy bloody neutrona wand but the pack isn't heavy the pack is great uh, if there's one criticism I would say for choosing to make a proton pack out of foam and that is never 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 leave it in the sun i did and this is what happened 
This was what greeted me one day after work. Disaster. Um, but my proton pack is still here. Um, I was able to fix it with more hot glue and some epoxy resin. Um, but it's not exactly the same as before. Um, this bit does stick out a little bit too far. Um, but, you know, I did what I needed to do to um, bring it back to life, really. And, and that was just one of the um, uh, kind of, uh, well, I don't know what the word is, compromises um, that I had to make in order to, to make it live for another day. So that's my phone pack. Anyway, so uh, thank you to um, person whose name I've forgotten um, for asking me to show off my proton pack. Um, I hope you can see it all right. Um, like I said, I am filming it from my conservatory, so it's not it's not the best place to do it. But um, but here but here it is. Um, I'd mentioned earlier about the kind of elitism in the Ghostbuster community, um, and I don't want to be controversial here. Um, there are always going to be people in a fandom that. Um, are really into it kind of a little bit too much perhaps um, and get a bit elitist about about it about hyper accuracy um, it's a shame really but you do get this in every in every um, fandom the, some of these people have been like proper into Ghostbusters for a long time I love Ghostbusters I was only a baby uh, when it came out so I didn't see it in this and I didn't have that experience um, so I appreciate that some people are quite kind of uh, protective about their about their fandom um, and they don't always like things like foam pack. They don't like the scratch pack, you know, it's not good enough. Um, they don't like the spirit proton pack, um, which is arguably a little bit small um, when it's on an adult, but you know, when it's under someone's back, nobody knows, you know. My daughter doesn't know that this is made of foam. She doesn't care, it's Ghostbusters. Um, and, mo and that's, that, that's the thing, if you are dressed up as a Ghostbuster, if you feel like you're a Ghostbuster, you, you are a Ghostbuster. You don't need um, the full Ben of Kent, Nicotron, uh, you know, Ghostface 2042, whatever it is, Light Kits, Sponge Face, Franken Geek, I can't remember who else there is. That, that stuff's great, it is great, and it is fantastic, and when you see them, um, up close those packs they look amazing they do look amazing but this also looks amazing you know this is made of foam um, and let's all just be friends because we all love Ghostbusters and we're all just trying to like it in our own special way so my challenge uh, to myself was um, can you make a proton pack out of junk well yeah you can because this was made this has made mostly of junk, but this did take a long time to put together, um, and I used um, some quite detailed plans from GBFans.com to to do it. Um, and you know, I had a light kit um, that I programmed from an Arduino. Um, I did buy some stuff for it. Obviously, the ribbon cable I didn't just have lying around, um, and there's some cast parts on here as well. So, so this had kind of pre-planning, but. The real challenge is to make a proton pack in one day with nothing but recycled materials and a glue gun. Everything is uh, recycled and scrap and junk. Not allowed to buy anything. Not allowed to pre-prepare anything. No rulers. No tape measures. No spirit levels. Um, can you make a proton pack out of junk? Yes. So here is proton pack number two. This is made entirely from stuff I had lying around. We have a yoga mat. We have a Java Cakes tin. Pringles tin. We have um, an obligatory, as a parent, bubbles. We have a toilet duck dispenser. We have a Hello Kitty. <laughs> What is that? Mints in a tin. A uh, stork kind of buttery spread. We've got a box for some chocolates. Box some chocolates. Uh, we've got, uh, what's this? Bayless and that hand wash, hand lotion. On top of a uh, Vaseline tin. 
We've got a glue stick and some facial wash. We have um, a box for some test daily perfume. Mm. Two lids from some Sterifeed uh, breast milk collection bottles. Uh, a uh, what, is, what is this? Like a bird, like a bird ladder. You know, you hang on a bird table so that birds can go on. Anyway, um, a coffee box, a tube of sweets. Uh, here we go. This side, we have Maltesers. We have some more perfume. We have a Dr. Be and stain removal. Two tubes of Smarties and um, a lid off of some perfume and uh, oh yes here's another thing I should have turned this on shouldn't I before I will edit this video partially so it's not quite so messy we have lights we have lights this isn't programmed in this is just um, it was a string of you know like fairy lights that you get had lying around um, and so the bumper is a belt and then the straps are another belt uh, you can't really see from mine um so this is this is a junk proton pack number two made entirely from junk there's no denying it's made of junk um it's visibly made of junk i'm not going to paint this no so to all these elite gatekeepers um, that say you can't be a Ghostbuster unless you've got a really expensive um, resin cast proton pack or 3D printed pack. BS. This makes you a Ghostbuster. You wear this, you're a Ghostbuster. So can, and no one can ever say that they cannot make a proton pack at home. And you don't have to even... I mean, this is, this is kind of noticeably made of junk. Um, but if you painted this black, Maybe if you didn't have a Jaffa Cakes tin down here. Um, I think I think they'd be hard pressed to say that that wasn't a Ghostbusters proton pack. I don't know. You tell me. Is it an abomination? Should I just stick it out in the recycling? I mean, that's where it was all going to go. This was all recycling. Should I put it in the recycling? Should I take it at the tip? Or uh, should I wear this with pride? Tell me in the comments. Like, subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.